On this episode of Locked on Angels, the Halos select a future second baseman in the MLB draft, and he said he wants to win and get a ring. I like this guy, and I think you're going to like this guy as well. We've got the details on the first 10 rounds, who the Halos selected, and when we might possibly see them. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked on Angels. Your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is. And yes, we are. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to John and I, the Super Halo Bros, for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers. Thank you, everybody who has subscribed already. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's really one of the best ways to get in touch with John and I and be a part of the conversation. And this episode of Locked On Angels is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right stay can make you a fan in any city, including your rival city. Check out Booking.com for your stay today. Happy Tuesday to you, and thanks for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fresh Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. It's our third season here at Locked On Angels. We're lifelong fans of this team, talking Angels baseball Monday through Friday, every single weekday, and with the All-Star break here, hope you... uh checked out the home run derby last night mike did you see that home run from pete alonzo last night that guy just always no i'm just kidding I, we haven't watched it yet it hasn't happened yet <laughs> uh, i just wanted to see if i could fool fool everyone hey on today's show we're talking all things mlb draft how the angels handled the draft and who do the halo select and how will those players impact the team mike we're going to get to the first pick here but i want to do it right uh you're approaching the uh, the podium. Mm-hmm. You're Rob Manfred. So so here we go. Boo! Knock <laughs> my mic over. Just booing you. I love it. Well, and then I'm gonna do it like Rob Manfred. Okay, here it is. It is with the first pack <laughs> in the MLB draft. Like I can't read. I, I mean, <laughs> someone get him some hooked on phonics. Remember that? There you okay. go. Christian Moore was the eighth pick of the 2024 MLB draft. That's yes, who sir. the Halos selected. Christian had a Banger of a season last year, hit 375 with 34 home runs, 74 RBIs, 83 runs scored, and a 1.248 OPS, Johnny. Wow. Mm -hmm. And led second baseman in all of NCAA with 111 hits. He had 236 total bases with those 34 homers, which set a new single season record for the Tennessee Volunteers. Johnny, this guy is a great player and looked fantastic last year. And there's a lot of people that have been talking about him. Share a little bit about what the experts are saying. Yeah, we heard from Lindsey Crosby. He said Christian Moore is going to the Angels at pick number eight. He's going to be a great upside double play combo with Zach Neto for, oh, a decade I or love so. That. Love, love the sound it. of that. Sam Blum, of course, the Angels beat writer for the Athletics, said, they selected Tennessee infielder Christian Moore. He's a prolific hitter and won a championship this year. We'll talk about the uh, College World Series here in a second. Yep. Uh, Taylor Blake Ward, Locked On Angels Hall of Famer. Man, shout out to TBW for worked hard. He's working hard through yep. this draft right and now and had car trouble. So I hope that I hope he figures that out. Did you see <laughs> his final tweet from yesterday? Was hey, I'm going to give you the tenth round guys that I missed, but first I'm having car trouble. Got to figure that out. So. TB, TBW, we're, we're sending all sorts of good vibes your way. <laughs> Leaves a little ebaymotors.com in his life. Hey! Uh, Christian, uh, Christian Moore is a physical slash mashing right-handed hitter. Strong, explosive cuts, get to all fields. Mm. Power with ease. There's some chase concerns as he looks to attack, though he shows some patience to believe and approach uh, so that you know that his hit tool is good. He says, fair, inconsistent defense while the arm limits his profile, meaning they tried him out at shortstop at one point. Not a good and idea. Yeah, it wasn't a good <laughs> idea. Second base definitely could be the play here. At worst, Mike ends up an outfielder. You know right. what I'm saying? Out but the field, at, maybe. Yeah. yeah at, but I, look, with the emphasis they placed on defense, you could see that definitely improving. In fact, he actually did get to meet Ron Washington 
at one point, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, Angel scouting director Tim McIlvain said that he watched the number eight overall pick Christian more closely at the University of Tennessee because he lives in Tennessee and scouted him in person a lot. He said, the more you see this guy, the more you can see all the little things he can do. He said Christian Moore will be a second baseman, mm. said the Angels don't have a timeline for a call up. And he said he couldn't comment on slot money and later round flexibility. So what did Christian Moore have to say about being drafted by the Halos, Mike? Johnny, I love this. He told MLB Network, I promise you I'll get a ring for sure. It's in my blood. And then he tweeted to Halo fans, I can't wait to get to work. I'm absolutely blessed to be a part of this organization. Couldn't be more fired up to start this journey. I don't want to rain on the parade, but get a ring with who is my question here. Yeah, yeah, that's the question. Come on, he's talking angels. He wants to get a ring with the angels. That's he promises that. He's on this team. He's right. excited to be here. Let's not read too much into it, right? <laughs> you know me and fellow angel fans. We love to read into all of that. Now, Keith Law reported earlier that he expected to sign with the Angels at a significant discount. When asked about the Angels' aggression on getting players to the majors, Moore said, I want to compete at the highest level as fast as I can. So, Mike, the big question here, how does Christian Moore impact the Halos right now and in the future? What do you say? Well, right now, I think that he brings something that you've pointed out pretty consistently over the last couple of weeks. He brings power to the minor leagues. There really mm -hmm. isn't a power bat in the minor leagues or... There isn't a bat that has developed into a power bat yet. Mm -hmm. I know that there were some players that the Angels have drafted that hit some home runs in college, but that hasn't translated to the minor leagues, at least at this point. And so there's a lot of like young guys who are fast and quick. Nelson Rada is one of those guys that we can bring up, but this guy brings a ton of power. He is somebody that I think is going to hit a ton of home runs in the minor leagues and possibly in the majors. And then the second thing, Johnny, when you talk about the future, everybody that talked about him on the draft coverage, they talked about how he could possibly be with the halos next season. Like mm -hmm. he, he could be on this team and playing consistently next season. Now, if that's smart or if it's not, that's a whole nother conversation, but all of these quote unquote experts are saying this guy could be fast track, not just because he's on the Angels, but because he's that good and you're not going to be able to keep him in the minor leagues for very long. Yeah, it wouldn't be exclusively an Angels thing to call him up quickly. It would have been, hey, no matter where he landed, he has the ability to come up quickly. Mike, one thing I noticed, uh, the Pirates took Connor Griffin right after the Angels selected Christian Moore. Now, Connor Griffin probably will stick at shortstop in the future but he is a high school prep player. Yeah. And so it's interesting to me that the angels did go college with their first pick and Christian Moore was sitting at about 12 in the MLB uh, top 250 in their uh, draft pipeline. One thing that shocked me about the first day of the draft was the disparity between where MLB had them ranked and where they ended up going yeah. during the draft. And, and you think about somebody like Montgomery went all the way down to the Red Sox at 12. Trey Savage <laughs> didn't go until the Blue Jays at 20th, and he was up there in the ranks too. So I didn't feel like the Angels missed out on anybody with this pick. Look, he fulfills a future second base need. I'm really looking forward to that tandem of him and Neto up the middle. I'll be interested to see what that looks like. And then a second baseman mm -hmm. with power. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. not something you see very often. And so that's an exciting prospect as well. But I got to thinking about the idea that, you know, of course, a number one pick will likely sign with the team that selects him. And so I got to thinking about that with Connor Griffin. I just wondered if there was a hesitancy there with the Angels to sign somebody who could go to college, who could turn him down sure. and sure. go to college. But at the same time, it does seem like Christian Moore can be fast tracked to the majors not at the expense of his development, but all the experts are saying that he'll get there quickly and he could be part of something special come maybe next year, but more likely 2026, 2027, that competitive window we keep talking about where it's like, hey, the Angels need to get themselves into a position with these young guys and surround them with talent so that they can be competitive in the years to come. What do you say? Yeah, 
Absolutely. And with Christian Moore being at second base, I think you have somebody who with power can have a big impact, not just defensively, but also offensively defensively. He's going to have Zach Neto next to him. Mm-hmm. So Neto's going to be everywhere and not comparing the players, but think of, think of how Brandon Drury plays second base, right? He plays pretty consistently over there. And there's a lot of comparisons with Christian Moore and a Brandon Drury. So it's, it's a positive, it's a good move, but here's what I love about, power hitting second baseman is they seem to be pretty influential on the teams that they are a part of. Think Jeff Kent, think mm-hmm. Ryan Sandberg. Those are the types of guys that had a huge impact on their team, not just offensively, but defensively. But the thing that I love about him, John is his leadership qualities that are starting to show. He's kind of a big mouth. And I mean that in a good way. Yeah. He's kind of, he's loud. He's kind of obnoxious. He's he's fired up. I yeah. love that. And we've talked often about how the angels just haven't had that type of leader. Trout's not that leader. Otani was not that leader. Alba Pujols was not that leader. This is the type of guy that I think will mesh really well with a Zach Neto and a Logan Ohapi. Mm-hmm. These guys who are sitting in the dugout going, we just lost. This yeah. sucks. Or yeah. look at the twins celebrating. This is a guy who's going to come in and go, let's get there. And we're gonna, I'm gonna help you get there. And it's not just gonna be two or two or three guys that are gonna be pulling these guys in that direction. It's gonna be these guys who you have to you have to get on or you have to get out, which is why I would say the players like a Matt Thice or a Taylor Ward, who are not great, kind of neutral hmm. type of players. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to the fiery spirit, they they're gonna have to decide what kind of player they want to be like mm-hmm. i don't think that the lack of hustle that we've seen from some of those guys the nonchalant throws back to the pitcher from matt Thice, i don't think that that's going to be tolerated in the future on this team with a ron washington and with a christian moore and a zach netto and a logan ohapi as soon as these guys realize like they're not the rookies anymore yeah. i think they're really going to start putting up some hard hard boundaries and say that's unacceptable this is the halo way. And if you don't want to play this way, then find a different team to play on. Yeah. And they'll met, he'll mesh really well with those players and have a good influence over the rest of the team. I mean, look, we've seen, we've seen Mike Trout fired up before and we've seen him get hyped before. I think about the Pujols yep. Trout uh, game against the Mariners where Fernando Rodney did his like closing arrow thing, you yep. know, too early in the eighth. And then he lost the game and Trout was like, hey, right back at you, bud, and did a little arrow himself. That's the kind of fire I want to see. And these young guys are going to bring that. And I think Christian Moore will be a big part of that. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. The Angels are back at it Friday. They're playing the A's at 640 Pacific time in Oakland. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. Coming up on Lockdown Angels, the second round selections for the Halos were some strong power arms, including one of them being the compensatory pick for Shohei Otani. So he's got a big weight on his shoulders. And we'll talk about all of that coming right up. Well, since it's the all-star break, there isn't too much sports that are sporting right now. And that's why you need FanDuel. Every day or should download FanDuel right now. They allow you to engage in sports, whether you're watching your favorite team or not, all you got to do is just download the app and then they're going to give you an opportunity to invest your time and invest your resource and win big. Use your sporting knowledge to your benefit with FanDuel. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up every single customer with a boost or bonus daily. So when you download the app, there's going to be a nice surprise in the app every single day and they're going to hook you up with a boost or a bonus. And if you want to know what a boost or a bonus is, you got to download the app right now. So head to fanduel.com slash locked on and you can figure out what the boost and bonus really is. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And today's show is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. It's America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 5 million members. Seriously, the most fun, exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports, your favorite players. You can do a little prize picking for the all-star game tonight, what do you say? You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000 and then spend that money to go to the all-star game because that's <laughs> how much tickets will probably be. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and you're locked in. You can add your favorite from the diamond for your prize picks lineups all season long, whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, first inning runs, take your pick or more or less and add them to your prize picks lineup today. 
Price Picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this season. So download the app today. Enter our code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. Again, Locked On MLB, all lowercase, all one word. First deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. Join Price Picks today. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. This is the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and this is Locked On Angels. And for your second listen of the day, you should check out Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel. It's programmed just for you every single day. Brings you the biggest stories in sports. They're going to be covering All-Star Game. They're going to be covering other sports. you got to check it out. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube, or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team team every day and your halos are back on friday they're playing in oakland or sacramento or in uh the high school stadium or somewhere and they're going to be playing at 6 40 pacific time and you can catch every pitch of the angels hometown broadcast with sirius xm on the sxm app just search angels mike the second round saw picks of 45 and 74 for the halos at 45 the halo selected chris cortez he's a reliever out of texas a&m Here's the big numbers that stand out for him. 278 ERA, 102 strikeouts in 64 and two-thirds innings pitch. Taylor Blake Ward tweeted that Chris Cortez has an elite sinker and slider, upper 90 super sinker that taps 100 plus, a budding sweeper that flashes plus, a change, a change up in the bag of tricks that he has with him. He works around the zone enough to project as a high leverage power reliever with a non-zero chance of uh, as a starter in terms of maybe getting some starter action in there as well. Arguably the best sinker in the class, according to Dan O'Dowd. Now, Chris Cortez did tweet. He said, I'm so fired up to be part of the Angels organization. Words can't express the gratitude that I have for this opportunity. Let's get to work and do something special. All glory to God, he said. Now, I did have to laugh because there was a moment in the College World Series where Christian Moore was at the plate and Chris Cortez was facing yep. him on yep. the mound and they exchanged some words. And I thought <laughs> what better way for the angels to continue to be the best drama on TV than to make these two teammates, Mike. <laughs> right. Right. Speaking of drama, that 74th pick was Woo! up and that's the com- compensation pick that the angels got for Shohei Otani. And so no pressure, Ryan Johnson, right. <laughs> who they selected. He's a right-handed pitcher out of Dallas Baptist from Taylor Blake Ward. He said he has a big electric power arm, a lively mid-90s fastball that Johnny tops at 100 miles an hour. Woo. He's reliant on a plus slider. It's really tight. And then he's got a sweeper that he can turn into a hard cutter. I, I love the talent that this guy has. He's also got a show-me curve. And a changeup, kind of one of those like I'm going to throw this, see if you can hit it. I'm mm-hmm. going to put it here, see what, see if you like it. Um, he's got a ton of size. He's got a lot of control, and he's got this violent delivery <laughs> that gives him a powerful leverage. And he also projects as a reliever. So, John, you look at Johnson and you look at Cortez, and then you have Ben Joyce in this bullpen. Whoo! Watch out. You might be ducking or you might be swinging and looking like you're not sure where the ball is going to go because these guys are throwing some heat. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm interested to see what happens with Chris Cortez, Mike, because he did start the season with Texas A&M as a starter. Yeah. And so then he found more success as kind of a multi-inning relief guy. Now, it does make you wonder with the kind of stuff that he has. Of course, he's got the velocity to be a strong reliever. But I am interested if maybe they go the Jose Soriano route. And Hmm. that, to me, tells me they've got time to develop here. Now, later on, we'll get into some of the other picks that they made in rounds three through ten. But I think Chris Cortez, of all the guys, has the potential to maybe still start. And, and of course, that's going to take some development, right? It's not something they'll be able to do right away. But I think if they come in with a mindset of, Hey, let's bring him in as a starter and and see what he can do. That would be an interesting path to take. We could even see possibly them start to do that a little bit later toward the end of the season in the minor leagues. We'll see where they end up putting these guys. Mike, uh, Ryan Johnson, look, I know we've joked he's going to have to hit, pitch, play outfield, play shortstop, (laughs) manage the team. Yeah. But 
During the 2024 season, he led all of Division I baseball with a 35.2% chase rate hmm. across all of his pitches. Uh, he was really good with the slider. It was a 40.4% chase rate wow. and a 50.7% whiff rate on the pitch. So he's got really good stuff. And, and him, Chris Cortez, Ben Joyce, like you said, could make for a really strong bullpen in the future. Do you see what, what do you, how do you feel initially about Chris Cortez starter reliever? What do you, what would you want to see? I guess. Well, I think that you have to consider if he was a starter and that you could develop and develop him into a starter. I think you have to at least consider that. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're seeing that with uh, Reynaldo Lopez when he went to the Braves, like went from a, from a closer, eighth inning guy to a starter. And yeah. and then you see what you mentioned. Jose Soriano is somebody that was kind of Jordan, a bullpen guy. Long -term, Walker right? as Jordan well. Walker's another yeah. guy. And so I think that you have to at least consider that. And the, and the reality is, is that you're not in a competitive window. And so the angels don't have to rush. Now, if they're smart enough, they're going to know that. Right. And I think when it comes to Johnson, he really looks like somebody that should be in the bullpen. Yes. He I looks agree. like a guy. Yeah. Seventh, eighth, ninth inning guy. Right. And here's, here's my, Halo fan prediction about four to five years when Shohei is slowed down a bit when hmm. he's not hitting 50 home runs, he's hitting 40, right? Uh, <laughs> That's his version of slow down. <laughs> we're going to go, well, I'm glad that we got this compensatory pick. Who's, in this game, closing out the division series so that we can win, right? Like, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, that's the narrative that we have. And we're like, oh, that 35 year old Shohei winning his 200th MVP, that's fine. We got this guy that's helping us win this game, right? But I think for him, he's going to be in the bullpen. And I think when you look at Chris Cortez, he's got to be somebody that you should at least give starting potential to. And quite honestly, I think both of these guys are going to be really good simply because they have good baseball names. Mm -hmm. Do you judge players by baseball names? <laughs> I judge course. players by baseball. I mean, Chris Cortez sounds like a baseball guy, right? And yeah. like it means something. It stands for something, right? Right. And, and same thing with, well, Ryan Johnson, he, he's going to have to be good anyway, because he, he is somebody that's taking over for Shohei in a sense. So right. I like both of these guys. I think one could potentially be a starter. One could potentially be a reliever. And I think the Angels got two really good arms here. I'll be interested to see how Ryan Johnson's chase and swing and miss stuff translates to the majors because he'll be going from college ball where yeah you can do that to college guys right probably into high a double a where yeah you can do that to high a double a guys i'll be interested to see how much fooling he can do at the major league level and if that translates well Locked on Angels is brought to you by our new everydayers, Booking.com. With summer, summer travel heating up, especially travel to baseball games, it's time to explore those cities that you've always secretly wanted to visit and learn more about. And with hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay, even if it's in your baseball rival's city from hotels that overlooked stadiums to family friendly resorts booking.com has so many choices across the united states for your summer travel this mlb season the right stay can make you a fan in any city so take all of the guesswork out of your travel and flex your booking power with our new everydayers at booking.com book today on booking.com the website or on the app booking.com app download it right now booking.com booking dot ready john yeah Mike, rounds three through 10 took place yesterday, and so we're covering those right now, and we'll get to the remainder of the rounds on a future show, of course. But let's start with uh, pick 81, the last of the top four 100 picks the Angels had. Uh, I, I should say the four top 100 picks that the Angels had. Ryan Prager, who's a left-handed pitcher out of Texas A&M. Uh, Taylor Blake Ward said he's got pitchability. He's a pitchability lefty with rotation upside. Low 90s fastball, it plays up from a high arm slot. He's got carry and command, a slider changeup that both flash above average, plus control, you like that. Repeatable delivery, you also like that. Yeah. With uh, an arsenal that gives him perhaps a three or four spot in a rotation uh, for Ryan Prager. So another college arm, so three college arms and one position player for the top 100 the four top 100 picks that the angels had ryan prager out of texas a&m yeah another college arm at uh pick 
110. That's in the fourth round. It was Austin Gordon. He's a right-handed pitcher from Clemson. He's tall. He's physically good looking. No, a physical <laughs> swing. He's kind of a kind of a swing guy, closer guy. He's got a low mid 90s fastball. He's got a short, powerful cutter and a slider with high spin on his curve. And he uses that as a weapon. They TBW said that it's flashy, it's above average, and got a lot of control. He's really tall, got a lot of size. He's got an arsenal where he could start with some development, but he does have some closing experience. He could also be a high leverage reliever with an added fastball that was a bit more powerful than his mid-90s fastball. So that's Austin Gordon, right-handed pitcher out of Clemson. Round five, pick 144 was Dylan Jordan, the first high schooler the Angels took, and he's a right-handed pitcher. You know me, I love the idea of developing a a high school pitcher and letting them work in the minors and yeah. see what you can get out of them. So I'm excited about this. Uh, we've got, uh, he's got a low 90s, uh, sinker that plays with a sweepy slider. You like that? It plays from a low slot, so a low arm slot. The change up. He's got a cross crossfire delivery that creates a really tough angle, but takes away from the command. Uh, and and he does have a starter projection. Now he does have a Florida State commitment. This is why you go for some of those high schoolers later on, so that you can save your pennies in the beginning. Yeah. and and throw them at high schoolers and say, look, if you come play for us, here's what you're getting right out of the gate, right? Yeah. Round six, pick 172, Peyton Olnick, a right-handed pitcher out of Miami, Ohio. Another pitcher, Johnny. The Angels went pitcher and heavy. He's in the taller than you, Mike. Right. This guy's 6'11", <laughs> 210. Uh, he's got a low 90s fastball. It also plays with a short slider from a low slot. He's got a changeup in his bag of tricks. He's got a really green raw arm and tbw says he's dreamy <laughs> purely on his body because when you look at him you're like oh that guy's a ball player right mm -hmm. but a lot of development needs to happen with this guy and he would need to add maybe a power fastball and he's projected to possibly be a, a relief guy because of how he throws and because of his size and because he's green. So Peyton Olnick, right-handed pitcher out of Miami, Ohio. I like the idea of giving hitters a different look. And if he's a tall dude with a low arm slot like that, that's going to be really interesting to watch. Uh, round seven, Mike, pick number 202, Bridger Holmes, a right-handed pitcher out of Oregon State. He's a sidearm closer, a low 90s fastball that plays from the slot reliant on kind of high spin, snappy, sweepy slider. It does flash a plus slider every now and then. Uh, he needs uh, a little bit of command refinements, and that's going to decide whether he's middle relief or a high leverage role. I was watching his sinker, and some of the things that MLB.com had to say about him was the scouts didn't like the fact that his uh, arm, it goes way back here, and if mm. you watch on the video side, and it kind of shows his arm for – a real long time. So that's gotcha. something I think they'll have to iron out of Bridger Holmes. First non-pitcher since Christian Moore in the first round was Randy Flores, pick 232. He's a shortstop out of Alabama State. He is a speedy left-handed hitter. He's a grad student who is approach over hit, which means ah. that he'll probably have a really high on-base percentage, but maybe not necessarily a high average. He's a fair athlete who's probably going to be an outfielder at the next level. So Randy Flores, shortstop out of Alabama State. Uh, round nine was picked 262. Derek Clark, a left-handed pitcher out of West Virginia. Uh, he's undersized for a senior. He's got an upper 80s fastball with some good speed separation from his changeup. A funky slider, above-average command and control, uh, but he will probably not uh, start in the majors because of that size. Uh, but at the same time, it seems like the angels are going heavy with relief arms in this one. Yeah. And then another infielder, a first baseman pick 292 in the 10th round, Ryan Nicholson from this Kentucky. one. This one I like a lot. Yes. Yeah. Six foot four, 220. Wasn't too, too much information as of this recording out on him. So some of the information that we got is he's got a lot of power, 23 homers last year and kind of a neutral infielder which means that he's not showing off not lagging behind right he's yeah. gonna play first base and play it solidly for the halos so ryan nicholson out of kentucky six foot four 220 pounds johnny give me your overall thoughts on the draft for the angels so far 
Yeah, you know what? I really like the top picks. I think that they spent their four top 100 picks pretty well. Um, Again, by the time things went to them in that first round at pick number eight, I think Christian Moore was a great decision. And it seems by all accounts, a lot of people are excited about him too. Not just not just us or Halo fans, but but baseball people yes. think that it's an excellent decision as well. So that alone gets me excited. We've talked about, and we talked about it with Lindsay, that the Angels had some opportunities to get an up-the-middle guy. And we've got catcher, we've got shortstop, we've got center field. And so the fact that we can get a strong second baseman who might play next year and <laughs> get called up rather quickly, I'm excited to see. I'm interested in the approach of, a lot of these guys' ceilings seem like relief pitchers. Yeah. And so I'm curious as to what that's going to look like. At the same time, Mike, there is still today's draft to or the, the selections and the rounds to go through. I also think perhaps the emphasis will be on position players when they start making trades because arms are going to be a top priority, of course, for the entire league. So perhaps because they're going so pitching heavy, Maybe at the trade deadline, they can do a bit more positional stuff. So what do you think? Yeah, I think what we saw with some of these relief pitchers is a good sign. Here's what I mean. I think Ron Washington has a good eye, and the guys he has around him have a good eye for, I think that guy's going to be a starter. Hmm. And and, and here's how we know. We saw that with Jose Soriano, and we also saw that with Andrew Wentz. They're like, "Mm, I think we should try them as a starter, right? I know Wentz has been hurt, but he – he didn't suck as a starter, right? He was getting, he was getting better. And I think that there's potential for him. I think that there's some guys in the minor leagues right now that they're going to do that with. And we're going to start to see that throughout the rest of the remaining of the season. And as we get into spring training next year, which means that they're going to be some slots that they're going to have to fill. And who knows what they're going to do with guys like Eric Torres, who is in the minor leagues. Is Mm -hmm. he going to come up and actually be in the bullpen or do they project maybe some length out of him? And remember, Sam Bachman is still there. Chase Silseth is still there. These guys are still developing. And so they're going to have to slot in some of these guys to hold down the fort as these guys get better and move to the major leagues. So it makes sense why they got some of these guys. Again, it's a lot of pitching, but Perry likes that funky arm slot. He, he mm. got a lot of guys that aren't just your regular type of pitchers. And so I think he's looking for different looks and he's looking to give the hitter a different approach. And so I, I really like what he did so far. I'm excited to see what he does today. It's funky with a lot of power, right? Yeah. It's it's always velo and it's always funk. <laughs> I saw a lot of people saying Ryan Johnson is like a hard throwing Jimmy Herget is what yeah. he looks like. Yeah. I was like, that's just, that's just cause of the classes probably. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for making locked on angels. Your very first listen of the day. The angels are back on Friday. They're playing the a six forty. Pacific time, and you can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. On the SXM app, just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow at Lockdown Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening, come on over to today's show on YouTube. Get in the comments section. Be part of the conversation. Hit that like button and that subscribe button on your way down to the comments section. We'd love for you to help us out in that way. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? We've got the rest of the details on the draft that the Angels, uh, the, the players the Angels will be selecting. We'll break it down for you. In the meantime, you should follow TBW. He's somebody that's really paying attention, and we're going to use some of his stats on this show, but we're going to share our thoughts as well. So all your draft coverage will be here tomorrow on Locked on Angels. All right. We hope you come back and join us for that. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Thanks for being here with us, everybody, and we'll see you back here on Wednesday. I didn't get drafted. I was really disappointed. I'm sorry. Maybe next year. Third baseman. I hit for power. (laughs) Throw it over the first baseman's head.